My name is Matt Hall, Mayor for the City of Carlsbad. And today's been a very difficult and challenging day. First, our hearts and prayers go out to all the citizens and businesses that were directly involved in, in today's incident. I would like to assure everyone in Carlsbad and throughout the county that the City of Carlsbad and its partners, the county and the surrounding cities, are all here to help us. We're doing everything humanly possible to have this incident under control here very shortly. I would also like to take this moment to thank all those first responders and the people who are on the front lines that have done a remarkable job to keep the loss at what it is at this moment. I also have here with me today uh, Supervisor Bill Horn, who would also like to say a few words, followed by Chief Davis, who will give you all the detail that you might need and we'll all be here for questions afterwards. So with that, I would like to turn it over to uh, Supervisor Bill Horn. Yeah, thank you. I thought this morning when I got up after yesterday that we were gonna dodge a bullet, but it didn't happen. Um, and we were in Rancho Santa Fe at eight o'clock this morning, or 7.30, and uh, get a call to come over here. Uh, currently, I have four fires going in my district. Um, the uh, Pendleton fire is the largest, it's about 800 acres. This is probably the most dangerous because it's the most populated area uh, here in Carlsbad. It's uh, uh, these neighborhoods, the neighborhoods I just left over behind the Carlsbad Library and uh, up here by the airport, uh, those houses were saved. Thank God for uh, CAL FIRE's air tankers and our helicopters. Um, you know, I've been asking for a third helicopter for about three years, maybe I'll get it now. Um, so they've done a tremendous job today um, and I've watched them save neighborhoods but at the same time the fire has been so big and the wind is so bad uh, that it really has gone into there and there are there is uh, actually some housing damage here uh, houses burned down um, I the, uh, the the other fire that we have at Pendleton I guess the wind has shifted as you can see the flags um, we're now looking at a threat going into Fallbrook area uh, which we'll address late about in about two or three hours um, and so we'll be going up there. Um, the other was the Paula fire. Uh, that's right down on 76 and 15 where that meets. Down in that canyon, the San Luis Rey River area. Um, and then now we have another reported fire just north of Escondido uh, along the 15. So I, um, this is, you know, it's a tough day. But I want to point out that the cooperation and the training we have done since the old witch fire and the Paradise Fire uh, has really paid off. Um, the $285 million the county has spent on fire equipment, helicopters, uh, engines, and what have you, uh, I think we're seeing the benefit of, we saw the benefit of yesterday, and hopefully today we can put these out. So with that, I guess I'll go to the next speaker. I think it's Chief Davis. Chief Davis. Thank you, sir. Uh, Nick, why don't you step on up here? Um, I'm going to try to my best to give you a synopsis of what happened today. Um, a lot of information is still pending. Uh, firefighting resources are getting the upper hand in the forward progress of the fire. However, there's days of work to be done. This fire's fingered in all different locations um, and fire deep seated, that's going to take them a lot of time. So I'll be getting more information filtering up to the from the command post to the EOC here in the next few hours. Um, the fire started at 1034 this morning and the first arriving unit reported rapid rate of spread in heavy fuels. Uh, the fire quickly jumped El Camino Real and was up into homes. As we've seen so many times in San Diego County, this is a serious um, effort by all resources in the county and I want to thank everybody who's here. Cal Fire, all of my neighboring agencies, Oceanside, Vista, San Marcos, Encinitas, they have all come to the aid of the citizens of Carlsbad, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of their efforts. The firefighters have been working extraordinarily hard. From the EOC this morning, 2,300, excuse me, 23,000 phone calls went out, combinations of mandatory evacuations, information, and precautionary evacuations. The mandatory evacuations remain in place east of Aviara Parkway. That's college turns into it as it gets to the top of the hill from Palomar Airport Road. 
So if I were to tell you where the fire is, um, you're probably all very well aware with your great mapping nowadays, and that's greatly appreciated, letting, our, letting all the public know what's going on in San Diego. Um, but south of Palomar Airport Road, um, just east of El Camino Real on Alicante, that area, and south to Aviara Parkway as it wraps around the bottom, that would be the box in Aviara College turning into Aviara Parkway on the far west side of the fire. Um, at the moment, I'll give you some round numbers, 52 engine companies, over 150 firefighters on this fire uh, from mostly uh, the local area and CAL FIRE support. Again, this has been a challenge with resources. We have multiple fires burning throughout the county and everybody's got priorities. Uh, what I can tell you is that everybody's doing their darndest to protect the public. On our fire today, there's, um, there will be concrete information on structure damage and destroyed. Um, I know of three destroyed structures and approximately 15, 12 to 15 damaged structures. More information and solid numbers on that will be in the next few hours. Hard to say when evacuations will be lifted on this fire. Um, there is still, as I look over your shoulders, you'll see what dark columns of smoke. Those are small headers. Those are areas that are either burning out within the black or they're fingers that are coming out of canyons and the firefighters are protecting the structures. We're not going to let anybody back into the evacuation area without coordinating thoroughly with the incident command post at Dove Library and making sure that the people go home as safely as possible. I also want to thank our, um, our police departments all neighboring police departments helped out the Carlsbad Police Department in evacuations and trying to get people moving on the roadways. I also want to thank San Diego County Sheriff. They've sent uh, 50 personnel in a platoon to assist in securing the evacuated area and helping people move out of the area that we need them to be so that the firefighters can do their jobs. I'll give you that in just a second. Um, I want to introduce Nick Schuler. Um, he's the battalion chief with Cal Fire. Nick was just down at the command post and has the most fresh information um, regarding that. We have some conflicting acreage reports. Um, both Nick and I from the gut feel is between 100 to 120 acres. Uh, so those firm numbers will come later. But uh, Nick will give you some perspective on what's happening on the boots the, on the ground level at, from the command post as well as maybe some regional perspective. Yeah, this, this morning when this fire started, the fire behavior and the fuel conditions we see are what typically we see in June, July, and August, not in May. The fire behavior was extreme, and from the minute that fire started, it was immediately threatening homes and evacuations were in progress. So not only were the firefighters trying to battle the fire, they were also trying to engage in evacuating people from their homes. As people heard about this fire, they were coming home to try to get their pets, to try to get things. So everybody did an excellent job in not only fighting this fire, but doing their best to um, help people get out of their homes uh, effective and safely. Uh, currently, the forward rate of spread has been stopped, like the chief said, but there's days of work ahead of us. There's still a lot of hot spots out there. We have resources coming from throughout California into San Diego County. More than 50 engines are coming just to pre-position in San Diego County. But more importantly, before this fire even started and before the Bernardo fire started, our agency pre-positioned resources in Southern California based on predictions from the National Weather Service. Those resources assisted in what we would call a surge protection to provide a, a large number of resources that you've seen over the last several days. Uh, from a regional perspective, like Supervisor Horn said, the fire on Pendleton has now had a wind shift. It's burning towards the Duluth area as well as Fallbrook, which poses several other challenges, as well as the fire on the 15. So we work very hard to share resources and when different priorities occur, we share those resources from a regional perspective. Thank you. A lot. Yeah, Nick's got the best perspective. Yeah, like I talked about, because of the fire behavior today, we had a large number of embers that were being tossed in the air, probably a half mile ahead of itself. So what we would see is the fire in one place and embers in the middle of communities that were catching 
uh, roofs on fire, we're catching uh, trees, fences, and things like that. So they're sporadically out. Uh, they're not just along the fire's perimeter, but well ahead of the fire as well. But because of the coordinated effort, we're able to send those resources out, deal with all the isolated fires. And though we did lose, a, though the fire did burn a few of those structures, the amount of structures that were saved because of the quick response is phenomenal. Real quick, before you, we get into questions, I'd like to introduce Suzette Lovely, the superintendent of Carlsbad Schools. Good afternoon, thank you Chief Davis for all the remarkable work of your team. And I'm uh, happy to say that we were able to safely evacuate three of our schools that were in the path of the fire today. The first school that was evacuated, which was near the fire's origin was Point Sedia Elementary and that was evacuated at about 11.15 or 11.30 this morning to a neighboring school in San Marcos Unified. And all those students, but maybe one or two, have been uh, picked up according to their principal. Our other two schools that were evacuated, as you heard, the fire jumped El Camino Real and Aviera Oaks Elementary and Aviera Oaks Middle School were near the path of the fire. Those two schools were then evacuated and those were evacuated on foot. Our, uh, Police services and fire services helped us get our students to a senior center and then the students were moved to uh, a fire station and now the remaining students have been relocated at the La Costa Omni Resort. So if there are any parents there that are still trying to get their children from Aviera Oaks Elementary or Middle School, they will be at the La Costa Resort. All of our children are safe. The remainder of our schools have been dismissed at regular dismissal time. The students stayed sheltered in place and our principals and teachers will remain with those students till they're all, they are all safely picked up as well. We know some of our parents are struggling to get here this afternoon and we want them to drive safely. As you heard Chief Davis say, it's very difficult to determine uh, the area of damage and whether or not families will be able to move back into their homes, especially in the Aviera Oaks neighborhood. And with that said, we have uh, decided in working with law enforcement and police services to close schools in the Carlsbad Unified School District for the next two days. So tomorrow on Thursday, as well as Friday, our schools will be closed and that will allow our families that may have sustained damage to their homes or, or having to evacuate to stay with their children until we work through this. Lastly, I'd like to say that uh, the evacuation center now and I think you'll get more information from safety services has been reassigned to Sears at the mall instead of Carlsbad High School. Initially Carlsbad High School was a designated Red Cross evacuation site so both the evacuation center and reunification center are now in one place at Sears at the mall. Uh, as Suzette said, the Carlsbad Mall has served as an evacuation area as well as um, Calavera Hills at the top of Carlsbad Village Drive in Tamarack. Um, people are there as well. The cause of the fire is um, under investigation. It's hot. It's at the back end of the fire. As I'm looking, there's still smoke in that area right behind you. Um, the Metro Arson Strike Team from San Diego City has been requested to come up and give us a hand for a quick determination, if possible, of the cause of this fire. And uh, we'll go ahead and take questions. Uh, as I said, we're getting conflicting reports on acreage. I'm going with just over 100 acres. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to draw on a map, the, and Nick can help out too, but it's really the Aviara Parkway area and Black Rail would be the bulk of the damage. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, off Black Rail uh, to the north is where we saw a lot of the damage and that was because of the embers we spoke about before. Um, but what we can also talk about is the fact that some of these homes had defensible space. They weren't home when the fire started but because of that defensible space and the, lar and the large magnitude of this fire, that really helped them in helping themselves. So that was greatly appreciated. Do you know what, what burned at the athletic field up by Black Rail? Uh, at the athletic field, there was a trailer that burned last time I was up there. 
Uh, it, it looked like it may have been a bathroom or something like that, but not a large commercial structure like what was reported. Any injuries? I have no reports of any injuries. No, um, the conflict might be, it was near a Carlsbad Park is where the fire, where the origin or the start of the fire was at the new Alga Norte Park. How many homes destroyed, how many partially damaged, how many breaches? I wish I could, other than I know 15-ish that are damaged or destroyed, and I'm thinking right now we have three totally destroyed. Um, damage assessments will be coming back from the divisions here within an hour or two. So we'll have a firm number and uh, we'll have damage assessment units out when it gets a little cooler when we get more of the fire put out. Sorry about that. Over 150. Do you have any information on structure damage up in Escondido? I don't. I don't have any damage, uh, any updates on structure damage on Pendleton uh, nor the fire in Escondido. You Uh, what Nick and I have talked about, the forward progress of the fire being stopped. The good news is it's not chewing up large areas of acreage. Um, that's, that's the first goal. The second goal is to put containment lines around this entire structure, or around the entire fire perimeter. That's what takes a long time. It takes days. And hot spotting. So Nick and Cal Fire crews, all the local crews will be spending plenty of time making sure that all those hot spots are out, that we don't have additional fire that runs up a hill and threatens more structures. Do you have a containment percentage? I'd put it at zero. So it is zero. You talk about putting down that containment. What about the terrain that firefighters are dealing with? I know it's in your neighborhood, but obviously you can't use it all. It's, but I know with you, Avi, are, it is kind of hilly. It's, it is hilly. There's some very steep slopes in there. So hand crews are on order and some are here those hand crews will be doing heavy work in terms of cutting line to make sure that the fire, the black that's burned, it stays away from the green so we don't have any additional fires. It's gonna be boots on the ground, hard, very hard work over the next 24 to 48 hours. Would you agree, Nick? Yeah. Thank you, everybody.